Yesterday it rained quite a bit. I wasn't able to record. We don't have a place to put the camera in dry. Uh, I got the rest of my forms done. Got the top, the board that runs across the spreaders on there. I had to cut them by hand because it was raining. I don't have a dry spot to, to work. No canopy or anything like that. In fact, I just now remembered my wife had one. I'm going to steal it from her. Anyways, so I went ahead and did everything by, cut everything by hand, nailed it down. I put my rebar in. I don't know if y'all was able to see that. But anyways, get that board out of there. Uh, rebar, it's two, my footing's two foot wide. Uh, 12 inches tall, that's what they recommended. One row of number four rebar. The numbers come in by eighth of an inch. Number one is eighth inch, number two is quarter inch, number three is three eighths, so forth. So number four is half inch. I went ahead and put up my foam ICFs here. Now the thing about these, you'll have a common seam. My common seam is right here. On that common seam, you have to cut it yourself. They have little group lines in the forms itself every so often, looks like every two inches is what the, uh, how far apart they look. I haven't measured them, but that's what it looks like. It worked out where I, the distance between here and here is the same as these right there. So actually I can stack a board or an ICF on top of it and overlap it without having a common seam. I don't know if I'll do that. I probably will because if not, what you have to do, this is so hard with the camera. On this common seam here, you would have to put a piece of board across it like so. That way it don't bulge out and you, ha you have a break on your uh, on your form there. Everywhere where there's one of these plastic things, there is a mark. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Yeah. Right there. That's that, that tells you where that mark is. You can screw into that. It's really strong plastic. It's plastic, but it's it, but it is strong, so they say. Uh, that's also how you anchor things on the wall once you get your house built, concrete poured and all that, and you're putting your cabinets or whatever on there. That's how you'll do that, through that. Or you can put a strip on there, like a, a one by or something like that, and screw into that. Uh, everywhere you have a seam, you have a clip. Look, let me show you without it being on there. Come with me. All right, now that you're back here. This clip right here, gosh, this is so hard. Anyways, it just snaps in there. There's a little mark or a little tab that it fits on. I did one on the top and the bottom on both sides of everywhere that there was a seam. I have enough clips. I ordered a box of them. I think you get like 200 in a box, something like that. It's a stupid amount. Uh, I think a box of them was 75 bucks and it might have been 250 you got I can't can't quite remember what he told me that was in there uh, I could probably go over there and look uh, anyways I got my first row on there of everywhere that the concrete's gonna be the stem wall I'm gonna get me another row on there and then there's another piece of form that fits in the top of the second row besides them clips them clips you don't have to put them in the bottom of your second row third fourth tenth twentieth however tall you want to go with it six of these equals nine foot each one of these are 18 inches tall four feet wide this is the only company hang on eight feet uh, long and 18 inches tall it's the only company that makes them eight foot they're also reversible so there is no top or bottom so if you have to cut one completely in half to make an eight foot wall you go ahead and do that and it gives you two pieces 
that's about it. Other than that, watch us put it up. Oh, rebar. It has a spot for rebar in it. Right there. The next, on my next row, I'll put it in this groove. The next row, this one, this one, this one, this one. Stagger it. And then your uprights, your, your verticals, will go right down in between it, and it'll keep it from moving this way. And all you got to do is bend the top of it, and it sets in there. Now, supposedly you don't have to put any uh, wire on it. I'm going to. Just a little bit. It just makes me feel a little bit safer. And then on your rebar, anytime that you lay two pieces together, you don't butt them up. You always leave at least two foot from the end of one piece all the way to the other end. Leave, well, I say two foot. What it is is 40 times the diameter of the rebar. I'm using half inch rebar, so technically that's 20, 20 inches. I don't care if it's 30 inches. A little more don't hurt nothing. A little less is probably okay, but I tried to go at least 24 inches on everything. And pretty much all my rebar is. There's a couple of pieces that's a little shy of that. A little too shy probably. Uh, working in the rain, I wasn't having a good day. One other thing before I get started. These little black tabs here. Let me see if I can't show you on this one. Okay, they're rigid. They got like little teeth in them. The next piece will fit on that and clip into place. From my understanding, this is the only ICF that does that. Uh, they pro the other ICFs probably have another way that they snap on there. Uh, if you mess up and put it in the wrong spot, all you got to do is hit it and it'll pop right off. Put, put it back in the spot that you need to. My forms are 8 inches wide worth of concrete. Five inches of insulation on both, all together, two and a half on each side. Supposedly, it comes out to an R value of 52, I believe is what I was told. That's, if you built a wall, and that wall, let's say you built a one foot thick wall, because that's what I'm going to do on my parts that's not insulate, or not ICFs. I'm gonna go one foot thick with uh, dense pack cellulose. I like cellulose, fiberglass is fine. I just believe cellulose is better. That's my opinion, everybody has their own. If you like fiberglass, hey, that's great. I've used it a lot. It's cheap, it's, it's, it's pretty much the cheapest thing on the market and it does do the job. Cellulose ain't much more expensive and I believe it does the job better. It has other properties to it. Uh, I know some cellulose, depending on where you get it, is supposedly mold resistant, mildew resistant, uh, fire retard, uh, and I just believe it actually insulates better because it packs in, you can get it packed in tighter and stop airflow. That's where these come in at, at being an R52 on your insulation value. You would have to build, by the time you consider the air seal on it, that's very important air seal in a house. You can lose, they say, 30% of your heating cost through not having it air sealed. You air seal it, you can save up to 30%. And that's depending on how good your house is built anyways, how tight. Uh, air is not gonna flow through concrete. Not, not, it just ain't gonna do it. Plus the five inches of insulation that's on here, what is that, like 30, uh, that'd be 28, 30, 32, whatever, of insulation value of, for, through the foam. Concrete really doesn't have an R value, but because it's air sealed and you can use it for a thermal battery, the, the mass of the concrete when it warms up in the winter time, well, even though you have insulation on the, it, ends of the wall it will still put off heat into the house in the winter time or in the summertime it will absorb the heat and keep it from coming into the house is the best way i can ex the easiest way i can explain that uh, so because of the air seal the foam the thickness of the concrete concrete four inches probably has an r value of one so you really can't consider that a an insulation value 
uh, it's not much well wood really don't have a great R, R value either and some people believe it does again log homes thermal battery the wood warms up it puts off the heat in the house in the winter time la da 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 anyways so I'm gonna have the R value of 52 basically my outside walls are gonna be the R value by the time I do my foam uh, my closed cell foam and for an air seal and my dense pack cellulose I'll have a little over 40 value on that I'm planning on an ice cube to cool this house down and a candle to heat it up it's only about 900 square feet if that uh, anyways I'm gonna stack another row on it I'm gonna put the uh, rebar in I need to tie them two pieces down then I'll put the uh, other rail in it that I was talking about on the second row. It has to be on there. And then I'm probably going to put it on the third row. Might put it on the fourth row. I don't know yet. Or put it on the second, the fourth, and the sixth row. If I have enough. I think I ordered enough. I can't remember. Uh, let me tie the rebar real quick. It won't take long to do. Then we'll start stacking it. And y'all can get an idea of how it goes. So, anyways, i got to put you in the sunlight. So y'all might want to get you a glass of water. Might get a little warm on you sitting in the sunlight. Well, it's got a little shade there. It stormed earlier. Like I said, it storms every day when I'm home. Okay, that's the corner. Y'all get to watch me from behind. My rebar. I just use regular old wire to tie it with if I can ever find the end of it. I will whenever it sticks me. There it is. I just roll some out. I don't have any specified length yay long if you want to double it up you can if you don't you don't have to uh, them little spots that it rebar fits in holds it pretty good I played around with it a little bit yesterday plus I wanted to play around with it a little bit before I started doing this because I've never worked with ICFs before I think they're great things by the time I figured up I couldn't buy or rent any uh, Simon forms, Aluma forms, or anything like that. There was no place around that even rented that kind of stuff. I called, I don't know, here in East Tennessee, that's where we were building that. We moved from Southeast Missouri from a swamp. Uh, believe it or not, Missouri has a swamp. It used to be. They built, they dug a bunch of dangerous drainage ditches i'll learn how to talk here in a minute uh years ago whenever my dad was a kid my dad's tapping 80 years old uh anyways they started digging them back then they drained a lot of water off it's all farmland now we still have some ungodly humidity uh before anybody from louisiana mississippi comments i work in that area no different no different trust me it's humid here this is, I was told today I had to go and take a physical for work. Uh, I was told today it's an ungodly humid year. And it's still, for this area, still ain't even close to Missouri. Missouri, when it's like 95 degrees with the heat index here, Missouri's about 110. Uh, last year, I think the worst it got in Missouri, we had a rental house burnt. Had to go and tear it down. Didn't have to, but I wanted to. Uh, no sense of having a burnt house standing. 127 was the heat index that day that uh, we got done with it. Give you an ideal. Not that uncommon there. 120 in the dead of summer is about, about normal with the heat index. Anyways, getting off subject. Uh, I don't even know where we was at. Let's see here. Rebar, I'm going to tie it. Uh, and we're going to start on the next row. Just We'll go ahead and go over there because I forget what I was even getting to. I do that a lot. I ramble. I love to talk. Uh, starting to feel more comfortable with the uh, camera. So y'all's going to have to listen to me jabber more and more. I'm not a professional rebar tire. So I use this. Professionals use pliers. They're 10 times quicker than I am with this. This makes it easy for the novelist to tie a rebar. 
cut my hand all up yesterday try to tie and rebar because I don't wear gloves and I'm an idiot. And my wife's son is over there hiding trying to stay out of the work. Yeah, you are. Guess it'd help if I grab a couple of pieces of wire. Don't have to put a tie every spot. Them things hold it pretty good. Just I'm just doing a couple of them. Nothing, nothing major. I'm just gonna put one on each end. It'll hold it in place. So do you do this only for the bottom or for all of them? The rebar? The rebar, you got to do it in every every row. Yeah, rebar's got you got to have one layer of rebar in every row. They recommend number four, uh, number five for your uprights, and I think that's at every four foot centers. I'm probably going to do every 16 inch center, and turn your head over here, and. I'll probably uh, just use number four. Considering how much more rebar I'm putting in there, I believe it'll equal out to the same. Plus, we're gonna try to, I've never done a stem wall before at all. Done a lot of footers. This is about my worst job I've ever done in my life. Uh, plus, Southeast Missouri, it's all sand. You just dig a hole, walk around it, pack it a little bit, pour concrete. Two-story houses stand all day long in sand like that. People buy a vibrator or a compactor and compact it down. I've, I've done several buildings where I've never used a compactor. This I did, or tried to. Uh, in well, I did a lot of work. I'm going to dodge the I'm lazy. I'll go over this real quick. You just hook it and hook it on your wire and spin it. It does fine. If you need more of a tutorial for that, there's some great YouTube videos out there for it, I'm sure. Uh, I just, I don't know. I can show you if you want. I curl my ends up like that. That's how I do it. Put it in there, hook it, spin it. That's all there is to it. Okay, son. How's it going to do after like, okay, so we're probably going to do like. Which question? Okay, so we're probably doing like five rows of this, right? Six. Six rows. How are we going to get the rebar in the sixth row? Well, we're probably going to have to go ahead and put the supports up. There is supports. I've got to move some of it. I don't know if it's in the camera or not. Yeah. You can see them. It's hard for me to see the suns in my eyes. Those channels of, of aluminum are part of the frame. I rented them from the guy that I bought these from. The, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you the brand. I don't know if they'll try to sue me. Everybody else says brand names on it. New Door. New Door. Do, new Dura is what they are. Like I said, I'm learning English today. It's my first day. I'm doing pretty good. Like I said, there are the only ones that are eight foot long, 18 inches tall. You can get them from, a, I know six inch thick, up to over 12 inches thick. Good thing about these, when you pour your concrete in, and let's say I used Simon Forms, and I took Forms off a week after I poured, at that point the concrete will not get any stronger. It just dries. The curing process needs to be through the top of it. With these, the foam stays on there. It takes 28 days for an eight inch wall to dry. Uh, I guess eight, 10 foot tall, somewhere in there. It'll take 28 days for it to dry completely. I'm using 4,000 pound, uh, 4,000 PSI concrete. 
because it's got to be pumped. That's the only formula the concrete company has around here uh, for the pump truck. No fiberglass in it. Pump trucks don't like it. When that 4,000 PSI dries, it'll end up being about 5,200 because of how it dries. Now, like I said, if it was a week later, I poured it. A week later, I took it off. You might get 4,000 out of it. Not going to guarantee you. But me and my son need to move them real quick. We're going to do that. Grab your gloves, son. We're going to move them. I need to get them on this side of the wall. And then we're going to put the next row up. Don't think I can do it, Dad. You know why? My gloves are soaked. So is mine. So why don't you jump over there and grab one and hand it to me? You know what they say about wet gloves? You can't work with them. What they said about white gloves is you're going to jump over there and have a fist. 